Hi, I'm Elke Holland from Prospectus IT Recruitment, and I'm still at U2 University 2012, and I've been joined once again by Dan McGrath. Can't seem to get rid of me. Dan, thank you very much for joining me. Hi again, stranger. Hi. Um, what we wanted to talk about today, if it's okay with you, is uh, cloud and virtualization. Sure, it's always an interesting topic to talk about. Brilliant, and I know that it's something that you're quite, it's quite key for you. Yeah, it, it's one of those topics that I think can be widely misunderstood by people. Well, could you start pers uh, perhaps by clarifying the terms and what it actually means? Okay, so I think the basis you want to start with is virtualization. And the whole concept about that is separating your physical hardware from your machine, or naturally called your virtual machine, now that you're doing this segregation between the two. Okay, and cloud? Cloud, it's sort of, you can think of it as an extension upon that. So not only are you segregating the physical instance of the machine from the virtual machine or your operating system, etc., you're also talking about outsourcing all the hardware. And typically it's done in big hardware farms of commodity or enterprise grade hardware. And it's providing that abstraction layer so you can use many virtual machines on this external hardware. So the main advantages are? Well, I guess the first one with virtualization is that it really allows you to optimize the use of your hardware. So previously where you may have only been using 10% of a great big machine you have sitting in the basement, now you can have multiple individual machines on this. So not only does it allow you to get greater usage by having more systems running on the same hardware, but it allows you to have that level of isolation between them. So you can now have multiple operating systems and application stacks running at the same time on a single piece of hardware. Okay, well that sounds pretty good, but when there's something that's pretty good, quite often there's a bit of a downside. Yeah, and I think this is one you don't hear about as often. So obviously there's going to be performance implications okay. when you're providing this level of abstraction. It's getting better, but it's still there. And the other one is really about increasing complexity, because as soon as you start throwing more machines and more operating systems out there, there's more administration tasks that you need to do. Okay. Um, now... Input output? Yeah, so I did say there was performance and input and output is definitely your whole IO stream is one of those big areas okay. of performance impact. So as you know that would be vital for a database is your IO performance. And same people don't really consider when they virtualize on their own hardware they think they get a one for one performance ratio. If you look at some of the papers that VMware has put out uh, you'll see that disk IO has a roughly 22% or around that area performance degradation. And that's because of the IO pipeline. So when you write something to disk, it doesn't just go straight to your disk. It goes through a multiple layers. So it goes to your database, and it goes to say your kernel, which will send it on to the driver for your disk, then it will go into a disk buffer, and then finally be committed to disk. When you virtualize, you have that virtual IO stream, and then it goes through the virtual machine as well to actually get to the physical hardware. So you're really lengthening the amount of code to write, read and write information, and that can impact your performance. Okay, so when the decision is made to actually virtualize and go to the cloud, what are the most popular mistakes that people make? And <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They, they do seem to be some popular mistakes, and I think <laughs> performance is the absolute biggest. It's all about being able to test your system and understanding what trade-offs you're making. Because not only is it a linear change in performance that you might experience, the performance characteristics change. There's lots of advanced code that's around scheduling of how writes are sent to disk and which ones they give priority to. By having this extra level of abstraction, how your operating system and your database handles this I.O. is going to change. Uh, particularly when you move out to somewhere like the cloud, where all of a sudden you can have network infrastructure in between your application and the disks that it ends up residing on. Uh, most applications aren't designed with having an entire network infrastructure in between it and the disks. Okay, you mentioned the data. Are there not? Are there any legal implications about uh, data storage and the location of it? Or yeah. So when you're moving out into the cloud, one of the key things to remember is that information is no longer being stored solely on your servers. It's been stored on a third party server. I know Europe has some very strong privacy laws and if you're in any sort of government 
government-based or government-regulated industry, say finance, there can be very stringent laws about where your information is stored and who has access to it. It's all about compliance and auditing. When you move your information out there, you really need to consider what risks you're taking. Uh, some people, uh, cloud providers, they won't even tell you what country your information is being stored in. So without knowing what country, how do you know what regulations are then, say, search and seizure or just someone grabbing access and copying it and having no legal repercussions that you could follow? That's a very key point to consider. Well, with the performance issues and then the uh, legal implications and everything, is it really something that you'd recommend? Yeah, I would still recommend it, with some caveats, of course. Any new technology or any technology that you're looking at changing, it's all about research, understanding the risks that are involved and the benefits you're getting. So even though there are some downsides, there's some great benefits you can be having as well. Say when you move out into the cloud, you have someone who's there looking after the hardware side of things for you 24 by 7. It's their full-time job to think about disk failures and network outages. And that can be really a big burden off your shoulders if that's not your core business. And there's some technology that you can use to help with securing your data as well. So automatic data encryption would ensure that even if they copied your machine, they don't necessarily have access to that information, which is something that you just need to consider. So I don't recommend against it. I just recommend you being diligent when you're looking into these technologies. Okay. Well, Dan, thank you once again for your time today. Thank you. I'll see you down at the bar. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs>